Speaking of big investment, Polygon, a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum, raising $450 million from Sequoia Capital India, Galaxy, SoftBank, and others to build Web3 applications and invest in zero knowledge technology. Polygon's native Matic token, surging almost 30% over the past seven days since the announcement was made earlier this week. Joining us now is Sandeep Nailwal, co founder of. Polygon. Hello there, Cindy. Thanks for joining us. So just off the bat, what's the valuation of Polygon now? And, and how do you plan to expand into Web3? Um, currently, uh, Polygon's fully diluted valuation is around 20, like, you know, 88, like this is 18.8 dollars. .8 and, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose uh, of this fund uh, has been um, you know, to to kind of like we have multiple efforts now. Uh, like you know, brief idea that Polygon is a, a layer two scaling aggregator. Basically, there's there are multiple solutions that Polygon writes to the developers from where they can choose to build their you know widely adopted applications. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, we have like with with the last two three acquisitions. Now we have around seven eight products in our suit. And each of these teams are, you know, uh, spread across the world, and they have their own uh, this thing, uh, own own stuff going on. So we needed like three to five year runway for them. Plus, uh, you know, we have a hundred million dollar fund and all that. So yeah, that's the that's the that was the core goal of uh, going for this funding. Uh, Cindy, uh, we had Ava Labs uh, CEO uh, Emin Gunsar uh, earlier this week, and he is not a big fan of layer twos, as you can imagine. He says that if you're if you're relying on a layer two, you've already given up on on its layer one. So, what do you say to that? How, how would you respond to that kind of criticism in general? Uh, you know, especially given the success that that Polygon has had. Yeah, so I mean, see, the markets speak for themselves. Uh, I mean, uh, when I say markets, I mean the developer markets, right? So uh, if you see the number of developers on Polygon, they are probably, you know, easily 10 to 20x, um, you know, 20 order of magnitude bigger than the developer activity on Polygon is 20 orders of magnitude uh, bigger than, let's say, any other layer one specifically, let's say, uh, even from Avalanche and all that. And I, I know uh, Professor, he's, uh, you know, very, uh, he, he's a big proponent of scaling at layer one. But, you know, we find it very difficult that, you know, on the layer one, generally you are constrained with three things. Like, you know, you have decentralization, security and scalability. And, you know, the, the scalability trilemma famously as said by Vitalik, uh, you can only choose the choose two out of them. So it's very hard for for us to uh, and and many researchers. It's not us. Like many of the researchers and the topmost of them are in the Ethereum space. And it's evidently clear to us that you know um, the scaling is not going to happen on 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 one particular layer. For example, if you see how the internet also globally is built, that you know you have these big optical fiber lines between transcontinental optical optical fiber lines between these continents but then each country has their own subnets and all that you can think of those subnets and cities having their subnets and and all that as kind of a layer two right and then you have one layer which connects the whole globe we believe that at web3 we all are basically creating this internet of value and then in that internet of value ethereum is the settlement layer right and then on the settlement layer you need extreme decentralization of course it's going to have like it going to mean that there will be the cost will be high and all that but it's extremely decentralized extremely secure resilient battle tested and has like strong network effects and then the business activity where the apps can have like millions of users they cannot exist on the layer layer zero they will have to have uh, you know, basically on layer one, you, they will have to have these own subnets or these own uh, uh, layer twos where these users can interact. I think Avalanche is also trying to work on this subnet uh, put within the within the layer one, but I think uh, you know the concept has been around uh, from them and like there is one chain that they have live and already with very minuscule adoption uh, their their costs the, the transaction costs on avalanche have soared quite a bit i think you know the dollars range or the transaction fees range between like you know two dollars to ten dollars also so already like they are already running into the problems which ethereum 
used to run, right? So uh, it's very hard. Like, you know, you also know the, some of the other layer ones which said that, you know, they will have yeah. tens of thousands of transactions per, per second on the layer zero, layer one. And then, you know, we all know where it, where it went. Uh, to, to the point that you said that the market speaks and, and that there are, you look at development behavior, uh, but there's also a lot of big money going in to some of the competitors to ETH, to Ethereum. Uh, and we saw recently we, with the uh, wormhole bridge, uh, for, there was the, the attack that basically led to this, this massive bailout for 300, so a third of a billion dollars of uh, people who were uh, dealing with wrapped ETH. Does that tell us that there's big money uh, going into competitors to Ethereum that are going to invest heavily on these these layer one alternatives and that they're going to make sure that they survive? I'm talking about the likes of Solana, which has a lot of um, investors in it. Do, do you think that that's sort of centralizing uh, yes. these other these other layer ones? And but nonetheless, we'll make sure that they'll survive with as much money as they can plow into it. Yeah. So, so see, funny thing about uh, this crypto space is that, you know, the, the, the space does not care about where the VCs are putting money into. Like, you know, even today, VCs are putting, putting money into Polygon also, right? It's like probably the biggest funding round. Uh, that means that they are also bullish on Ethereum. The fact is that none of the VCs right now who have put in large money in these, uh, you know, various different protocols, uh, if you see the same VCs are involved in one particular uh, layer one protocol, they are involved in other two also. And then many of them are also involved in, in layer twos like Polygon and uh, Starkware and, and whatnot. The, the fact of the matter is, and that's the core thesis of Polygon, that we are still fairly early into this, into this uh, you know, infrastructure uh, development of, 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 of Web3, right? And then there are going to be multiple iterations before you know the the market settles on on you know something like you know okay this is this is the ultimate uh, infrastructure of 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 uh, web3 uh, and only thing that seems to be very sticky and lindy as they say is ethereum right right now and uh, we are very strong believers in ethereum and we believe that it is continue it it will continue to grow as it's it adds some of the scalability with this pos merge that is happening and then later on like you know the data availability shards come in, in two to three years five years time so it will enhance the scalability for layer twos and it will provide like you know massively scalable ethereum ecosystem where you know the the the, the hundred million to a billion users can come in Right. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, so coming back to your VC's question, I don't think any VC has any conviction right now. They are just, you know, uh, putting uh, their eggs in various baskets and, you know, who okay. Oh, no. Has he frozen? Ooh. Hopefully we can get him back, Sandeep. Oh, I had so many. Oh, go away. I think he's uh, coming back. Okay. Yeah. Sandeep, Is it, um, oh, I just wanted to switch topics, yeah. you know, no worries. So Vitalik Buterin donated about a billion dollars in SHIB to the India COVID Relief Fund, which he founded, and you're giving back a hundred million to him. So I just wanted to, you know, find out why. And I know it has something to do with him being a foreigner and being able to deploy money faster potentially, but I, I don't understand why that is. And and I'm curious how you've been managing the rest of the funds. Yes. So see, uh, you know, the problem is that Indian, uh, you know, uh, uh, regulation is still not very clear around crypto, although we managed or we, we run the crypto relief fund in a way that that crypto gets converted into the into the fiat currency outside of India and only the fiat currency hits india but even then uh, you know there are multiple uh, like you know scrutinies keep coming in and then you know we have to be extremely compliant and uh, you know anything like you know we have to do we can't experiment too much like we have to be absolutely sure that this project is good and then we can uh, you know deploy money onto that so all this while like you know even though vitalik donated 1 billion uh, you know worth of shiba but you know like i mean there's not so much liquidity so we could get like around 470 million out of it or something and then we have been in the last 6 to 8 months have been able to deploy around uh, you know 70 75 million dollars and vitalik had some ideas about some of the experimental projects where he wanted to fund not only in india but outside also and it was donated from him only 
when we had that discussion we said that you know absolutely like you know for him since he's an outside or a, a you know foreigner from india and he's not that much bound by you know a lot of scrutiny that happens in india so he can you know route these or fund these companies from outside india by having a you know separate entity somewhere else and then can donate from there so he can he's basically more free to do experiment like let's say we experiment a project with some of the ngo or some let's say testing developer and all that and turns out they are not so great or they are like there is some sort of scam involved in something all the responsibility comes into me because you know if you see when i started that fund i said i take the full responsibility of transparency and uh, then that these funds yeah. go to the right places and you know globally and going also, to covid relief in, right Yes, yes, COVID relief, COVID relief. We call it crypto relief, and I'm saying that you know globally also we know, but in India specifically there has been a lot of like you know bad practices within NGO. Some people run it as businesses and all that. It's very hard to separate who's actually going to take that impact into the mark onto the ground and all that. So we make sure that we have multiple audits, multiple uh, you know scrutiny before we sign off any amounts to them. Because I, being an Indian, if anything goes into wrong wrong hands. Uh, you know i or my family can directly get into trouble so i have to be extremely careful but for vitalik he can be much more flexible in terms of experimenting it and vitalik's thesis is very clear that you know even if you put let's say 100 million out and then let's say 20 30 million goes into into waste or those projects are not good enough at okay. least 70 million gets gets to the ground right so uh, so it's it's and also Sandeep, fine we got We got to wrap up but I just want to you know get in one more question there and and that's on the state of India because the central bank chief has been saying that crypto is unstable less valuable than tulips the finance minister is saying just because they're going to tax crypto uh doesn't mean that it's legal so I wonder what is the state of crypto in India in your in your opinion See there are various narratives but I'll tell you what I hear from the top leadership uh, the top leadership is very progressive in India then they know that this is something big that is happening you know not like just now you you had like kpmg getting involved into it and tesla and you know elon musk of the world are involved into it so don't they know although they don't understand it fully but they know that there is a very high potential here and this this go this might be the next internet so they do also don't want to go absolutely hawkish on it and you know completely put umbrella ban into it and also but they india is such a large country and has a history of like you know uh, black money and all those things where the money where the where those transactions don't come into the books the moment and the government has done a lot of work in the last 10 15 years to put a lot of to bring a lot of information technology into it and bring a lot of things into the books but now suddenly you introduce crypto and then people have a completely you new avenue to you know take this this stuff out of the book so their their nervousness is is fair very very fair and they want to go slowly but they also clearly don't want to don't want to ban it so i don't see any chance of you know crypto getting outright ban in india it they will have they will slowly progress right now they want to push back you know the retail to you know in coming coming in hordes to to crypto they want to take it slow uh, allow only big institutions to come into it and then slowly understand and then go grow with the policy